We are back on the Rational Boomer podcast. Hopefully your day is going well. It is a Friday. We've had a long week, a lot of things happening. Donald Trump was in court in his criminal trial in the Manhattan District yesterday. A lot of shit happened. We'll be talking about that. But he's back in court today, and it'll be interesting to see what gets revealed and how badly it goes for Donald Trump. He's doing a lot of sleeping. He's not looking good. His lawyers aren't doing real well. It's funny. There, there isn't um, anything to really be positive about when it comes to Donald Trump. And I love this, and I know you do too. We've got some emails to get to, but before we do that, I wanted to mention something. I was doing my TikToks today, as I do, and sometimes I get a little uh, riled up about some things. Uh, and there was one particular topic that bothered me the most today, and that was these constant comments on my page where people will say, oh, nothing's going to happen to Donald Trump. He'll just get away with everything. And this isn't typically Republicans. This is typically Democrats. And it just caught me wrong. I explained in the video, I said, look, man, you really think nothing's going to happen to Donald Trump, that nothing has happened to Donald Trump? He's got $275 million taken out of his ass, put in an account he can't touch and will never get back. Nothing's happened to Donald Trump. He's in court on trial with 34 felony charges, of which many he will get convicted of, but yet nothing's happened to Donald Trump. And I went on to say that I'm getting tired of hearing these comments. It's one thing if this was three years ago when little had happened to Donald Trump, but if you're saying it to this date, you're not paying attention. You're stupid. It's ridiculous. The sense I get from these people is, Unless he's handcuffed and put in jail, I'm going to be mad. It's not what I want to see, so I'm going to fucking pout. And I take personal offense to this. It's one thing to hear stupid shit from Republicans, but when a Democrat comes in and does this, it annoys me. Because as I've said before, you do know you're worth nothing to me. Uh, if you're going to be negative and you are going to say things that aren't true, just step away. We don't, we don't fucking need you. So anyway, I made my um, my rant about that. I didn't name any names. I didn't show anybody's comments. I don't do that because that's a sure way to get some shit. I just relayed what the comment was and I gave my response. Well, sure enough, within about 10, 15 minutes, they took down the video for bullying and harassment. So I appealed it. I said, how can this be bullying and harassing if I didn't name anybody? I'm talking in general terms. And then within about 10 minutes more, they said, OK, yeah, you're right. It's back up. OK, that's cool. That happens from time to time. You get somebody that's butthurt and uh, uh, they start whining to TikTok and this sort of thing happens. Now, the person I was talking about, I didn't mention their name and I, in fact, blocked them. Yeah, that's right. I blocked a Democrat. I get those kinds of people that repeat this shit, and we just don't need these kind of people bringing us down. I don't want to hear it. They're of no help to us. We're in a fight here. We're in a war, and we need people willing to fight as opposed to people just whining and pissing and moaning. I don't want to hear that. So anyway, um, it gets back up, and I think all is well. And then about 10 minutes after that, they take it down again. No explanation, and there's no way to appeal it. So I'm just stuffed, stuck taking it down. Now, that said, fortunately, I'm smarter than that. That same video is up on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube. So, you know, going forward in the future, it may come down to uh, the more intense videos are going to show up on those platforms and not TikTok. Um, I'm not sure what the, what the, what the algorithm does to some things I say, because I very rarely get something taken down, but it pisses me off when, when I do. I also got the typical thing I've been talking about before where they'll take me out, take a disqualify a video from the creator fund because it's not original. I send them the same, e the same DM back that of course it's original, just gauge it against all my other videos. There's a bunch of imposters out here. We've complained to you. And uh, you've done nothing about it. So I don't know why you don't go to them and you're coming to me when I'm not doing anything wrong. 
and I go on about possible legal remedies and such, and they always put it back up. It's just an, an annoyance, and it's 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 a pain in the ass. And some days I get really frustrated with TikTok. It just seems like more of a game sometimes. All I want to do is what I want to do and leave me the fuck alone. I don't call out individuals typically, unless it's Donald Trump or somebody who has uh, you know, notoriety where I'm perfectly legal to do that sort of thing. Anyway, a little pissed off at TikTok, but, you know, TikTok is a means to an end. And when I say that is the whole reason I went on TikTok is to gain a following there so that I can do something like this, a podcast. And it's worked out well so far, so I'm not going to cry about it too much. I can't control what I can't control. Just keep doing what I'm doing and keep moving forward. Well, we're coming into the weekend, and I should give you a heads up, too. On Monday, my wife and I and my brother and his wife were going out of town. We're going flying down to Miami, and then we're going to go down to Key West. For what reason? Well, we'd never been there before, and I wanted to see it. And so did my brother and his wife and my wife. So that's what we're going to do. I'm, prob- I'm probably going to have some pre-recorded podcast up and available for each day throughout the week. But I realized that something could come about um, that is breaking news, so to speak. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do, I don't know how this is all going to work out. I want the podcast up so there's always something there, that you have something every day. And I've got some good people I'm going to be talking to, Eric and Jace and Alona and Ed. So that'll all be there for you uh, when you're listening. But If there are situations where there's breaking news, um, what I'm going to probably do is do an additional podcast, but a shorter podcast, maybe 20 minutes. And in that 20 minute podcast, it's just going to be kind of an update. And I'm thinking when I get back, that may be something I do too. I do the podcast at night about midnight, talk about the previous day. What I'm thinking of doing while I'm doing TikToks is to sit down and do another podcast of 20 minutes, just kind of updating what's happening during that particular day, just try to stay on top of things. It's not going to be that hard to do. So I may give that a try. So we'll see what happens. I'll be curious as to what you think uh, when I do that. Anyhow, we've got some emails to get to. So let's do that. This one comes from Paul. He says, hi, Mike, I'm from Nova Scotia, Canada, and have been watching your videos for several months now. Love it. Say it exactly the way it is. There is Possibly another reason why MTG hasn't actually made the move to vacate Johnson. I also listened to Bo of the fifth column, very smart guy. In the past couple of weeks, he mentioned that there has been a rumor running around at the Capitol. Rumor is if MTG moves to vacate Johnson, a fewer, a few Republicans said they would instantly step down. Paul, you know, actually I heard that rumor and uh, that sounds reasonable. People are getting tired of MAGA. People are getting tired of uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. And can you imagine if a few more did step down and then all of a sudden the Democrats have the uh, majority in the House? That would be fucking hilarious. And um, she was supposed to do it this week when they came back, but she didn't do it. But she's still threatening. The only thing I would say about that is something we've talked about uh, on the podcast before. These Republicans aren't afraid of getting embarrassed or cutting their own throats. They just double down. They triple down. Even though, even though they know they're wrong or they're going to be embarrassed, they will still do it. And when you look at Marjorie Taylor Greene, she's not the brightest girl. And somebody might say, well, that's disrespectful to call her a girl. I'm cool with that. I will disrespect MTG all day fucking long because she is not a respectable human being. Anyway. I can see the uh, the Republicans doing that, and that would be interesting. I'd love to see it because it would create all kinds of chaos in the House for the Republicans, give control back to the Democrats, and then maybe we could get a few things done between now and Election Day, which should help the uh, Democrats and hurt the Republicans. So let's go for it. She might hold back. Somebody might be able to keep her back from doing this. But you know Marjorie, 
She's done some dumb motherfucking things. I wouldn't be surprised if she did exactly the opposite of what everybody asked. So I'll keep my fingers crossed here. We'll see what happens. Um, hopefully she'll try for the vote of no confidence. We'll get three people from the Republican Party stepping down, and then we don't have to worry about whether Johnson has the job or not, because he won't. Hakeem Jeffries will have the job. All right. The next email comes from Oliver. He says, hi, Mike. I just wanted to get your thoughts on the following. Why does the media always report on Trump's true social comments? He only has about two to three million subscribers, but when the media reports on them, it's hitting tens, if not hundreds of millions of more people. If they don't report on them, hardly anyone would even hear his lying rants. It's not like when he was on Twitter that he had 250 million subscribers. I feel by reporting on all his posts only adds to spread his lies and bullshit. I just wanted to get your take on this. Well, this is something I've talked about before, and you're absolutely right about that. I don't think he even has two or three million. Some people have said there's under a million on True Social. If we went radio silence on him with the rest of the country and just let him do the true social thing, you're right. Nobody would hear about him. But, of course, the media steps in. And why? Because Donald Trump says some crazy shit. So it's good TV. It's going to get ratings. They're going to make money. Even if it hurts this country, they're going to report on it because they got to fix the bottom line. And to be perfectly honest, what's going on with this true social thing is exactly what happened in 2016 when he came down those stairs, said he was going to run for the presidency and nobody believed it. and Nobody thought he had a chance up until the left side media started reporting all the things he said and did because it was good uh, media. And then he got the legitimacy and ultimately became the president. You're absolutely on target with this. If the media would just shut him down, shut him out, uh, we'd have far fewer problems. But again, the ratings would go down for the media outlets and they would make less money. And that's far more important than the future of this country. I agree with you, Oliver. Unfortunately, we're dealing with uh, um, some less than ethical fucks in the media. All right. Next one starts out, hey, Boomer and Boomer Brigade. I just saw this video, Keep Talking, and basically is the basis of the whole MAGA movement. Keep Talking, I think that's something I did. Trump and his followers and many of the Republicans are the remnants of a core belief that the rich white Anglo male is the ruler of the world, basically the Aryan myth. The beginnings of which go back to the Bacon Rebellion of 1676 which resulted in the establishment of race in this country and the beginning of establishing race laws and class discrimination. It is a subject that we all should check out. Despite the Yankee Doodle fairy tales, we've been brought up on about the revolution, the colony still based governing on English common law, which basically considered women to be lower than cattle. What a lot of people don't realize, many of our leaders at the time believed that the white Caucasian Christian male race was, by God's hand, the only race capable of democracy, and all other peoples were totally inferior and unequal. Thomas Jefferson once said, I dream of a nation warmed by an Aryan sun. Many of our leaders all had classical education, which included the required study of racial theory. This was taught in our highest universities until the 30s, if I'm not mistaken. This establishment used this as an excuse for the manipulation of all the wealth and power. This is at the crux of the Republican conservative movement to move us backwards to a time where they control everything and everyone. They are panicking in the 21st century because in the light of discovery, these beliefs are ridiculous. I told you guys once to read The Imperial Cruise by James Bradley. This is what we're fighting against. Their BS isn't working anymore. Thanks, Boomer Z-Man. Well, thank you, uh, Z-Man. I appreciate that, and uh, you're absolutely on target there. This is why I like doing this show. I get people who are guests on the show. I get uh, people sending emails. They're smarter and even more well-read than I am. And I get to learn a lot. 
So Z-Man, I appreciate that. You know, that's the one thing about racism. I was just talking about it with my wife. We were talking about women's rights and uh, racism. We we're thinking back to the 60s. Both my wife and I were born in 1960. Her birthday coming up, May 26th. She will be 64 too. But anyway, we were talking about the attitudes about women. Now, if you were to bring those attitudes out now, you'd be appalled. People would be getting canceled. But back in those days, it was accepted. Racism was accepted. If you had the audacity to say the N-word, people might flinch a little bit, but nobody would think it's a big deal because it was accepted. That's one of the things that we have to worry about or think about anyway, is that if we compare today to the 60s or 70s, it's really not comparable because they were different times, different beliefs, and different behavior. Now, I'm not I'm not apologizing for that. I'm at rather appalled when I think back to my youth and I think back to the uh, the way people thought then. But as we go through the generations, we do change, we do evolve to a certain extent, and thank God for that. But there are some people that just don't evolve. They don't grow. They don't learn. They don't comply with the rest of the country. And that's the unfortunate thing. And these people happen to be in the Republican Party. And um, Z-Man's right. We are kicking their ass. They are losing and they are freaking the fuck out. But as I've said all along, we need to continue to fight and push and finish the job. Finish the fucking job. That's what we've got to do. All right. Um, Z-Man also uh, made a comment on the podcast page. He said, Trump has complied to order to take down true social post was done within 30 minutes. So much for never surrendering. Um, yeah, that's what happened when he first got hit with the $9,000 or $9,000 um, fines on the nine violations of the gag order. One of the things he had to do is take down all the posts that were uh, violating the gag order and Donald Trump for as much of a, contrarian as he tends to be and a tough guy yeah they went in there very quick they took all that shit down because donald trump is a pussy ass bitch all right um now this one was put on the podcast page and i don't understand what it's referring to maybe i should i'm going to give this guy's whole name michael davis it's a pretty common name you're not going to track this guy down but this is what he said to me. He said, if you're that stupid, you deserve dot, dot, dot. Pretty shameful things to say. I won't be listening any further. <laughs> He's referring to something I've said. If you're stupid enough to vote for Donald Trump, you deserve what you get. I stand by that. You may not like it. You may not agree with it. But as I always tell people, if you I don't understand why you listen to the podcast if you don't like what you're hearing. You don't have to. You're not being required to. And Michael Davis won't be listening anymore. So let's have a moment of silence for Michael Davis. All right, fuck that. <laughs> anyway, see you, Mike. Have fun. We don't care. All right, the next one comes from Becky. Hey, Mike, I consider myself pretty well informed. I watch the news probably more than is healthy, but I'm either slow or miss something. I understand the protest about the treatment of the Palestine people, but I'm still confused about what the kids want from the school or what they want the school to do. Please help. Thank you. Thanks for your daily podcast and TikToks. I look forward to them. Becky, I'm glad she brought this up because one of the first TikToks I did yesterday, I was talking about uh, the protest on, on the campuses. And I don't like talking about the Israeli Hamas war because every time I do, I get people from both sides saying what you said was shameful. And I'm not even wading into the whole Israeli Hamas war. I'm just talking about now what's going on on the campuses. And what young people have to understand is this idea of protests on campuses this isn't new. If you're old enough to have grown up in the 60s, you know that there were protests on campuses almost every fucking day for women's rights, civil rights, the Vietnam War, Richard Nixon, all this shit. 
That was going on all the time. And from time to time, it did get violent. Now, the question is, what do they think the schools are going to do? And I suppose it has something to do with, you know, what what organizations the schools um, support. I'm not smart enough to know all of what their complaint is, but um, I'm more interested in the fact that they want to continually blame Joe Biden for this. And every time I talk about it on TikTok, someone comes back and gives me shit. I feel more comfortable with it here because you know me. You, you know that I'm not trying to side with either side. They both have problems. Israel has Benjamin Netanyahu. He's a mini fucking Trump, and he is the main problem in this situation. Then somebody came along and said, how dare you support Hamas? I never supported Hamas. It's a terrorist organization. My biggest concern are for the innocent people, the people in Gaza that are little more than the collateral damage to these two groups. Benjamin Netanyahu's military and Hamas. And these people are, 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 are getting damaged and killed. That's who I'm for. But anyway, they want to blame Joe Biden. And one person came on and said, um, um, how dare you do this? I, I can't, I, I can't see you siding with Joe Biden on this. Well, look, Joe Biden's doing everything he can to settle this thing down. He's doing everything he can to get help to the uh, folks in Gaza. But Joe Biden isn't the president of Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu is. Joe Biden only has so much control, and we are an ally of Israel, so we have a responsibility to support them. I don't know what they expect Joe Biden to do more. Um one person said, I can't vote for Joe Biden. I said, so then, you're not voting for Joe Biden, then the alternative is Donald Trump. Donald Trump, who is Benjamin not Netanyahu's BFF. Donald Trump, who would stand with Israel, and it would get uglier there. So that's your option. You're going to go with Donald Trump instead of Joe Biden. And I made the observation, is is what we're looking at here is, is the progressive Democrats really fired up about this. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be fired up about it, but I'm a firm believer. I don't worry about things I can't control. I worry about the things I can control, or at least that are important to me. And that's why the Israeli Hamas thing isn't as important to me. There's nothing I can do about it. And anything I do, I'm going to get shit about it. We got a lot of things going on in this country. So I focus on talking about that. But, um, one person said, you can't stand with Joe Biden and what he's doing. And I never said I did. I just said, I'm not blaming him for everything. And then I said, well, OK, please tell us what you think Joe Biden should do. If you don't like what he's doing now, what should you do? And there wasn't really any answer for it. And I know what they're going to say. They're going to say he should pull all funding from from Israel. And that actually may happen. If we find out that they're committing crimes, war crimes, while using our weapons, absolutely, they should pull this shit back and, and hammer them. But again, it's still a tough situation because we're an ally. So I'm talking about this, and I'm getting all kinds of heat from a bunch of people. And, and I'm just talking about the protest in the United States. One of the big problems with the protest in the United States is this anti-Semitism shit and the violence that's going on. And I will tell you, back in the 60s, we had the same problem. We had violence and anti-Semitism and uh, misogyny and anti- uh, or racist claims and all that stuff. You get a group of people together and you're going to get that. Not because they're bad people, because there's some insurgents, people in the Republican Party see what's going on and they take advantage of it. They send people in there to start shit. It's a mob mentality and then it gets to be a shit show. That's what happens. And don't tell me that they don't send in Republican insurgents. I'm in Minnesota. I was here watching it all when George Floyd was killed and they had uh, uh, protests there with Black Lives Matter. Well, the third precinct uh, 
police station burned down. There was all kinds of damage. And of course, the Republicans are blaming Black Lives Matter. Now, I'm not saying there weren't some Black Lives Matters involved, but not until there were these racist insurgents coming in, starting shit. And don't tell me that's not true, because I watched video of a guy, a white guy in a military outfit, breaking windows and starting shit. That's what happens. These people are taking advantage of the situation. And I said, here's the thing you have to They asked me, how do you think this will affect the election? And I said, with regards to Israel, I think it'll probably be over before the election comes. And I don't think it's going to be as big a deal as the Republicans would have us believe. But make no mistake, all of this has a little something to do with the election. We see it right now. We hear the screams about the border. And the only reason they're screaming about the border and then not doing anything about it, it's about the election. The Israeli-Hamas war has a lot to do with the election. And you got to hear me out on this. Hamas attacks Israel unexpectedly, and they are unexpectedly successful. Well, how the hell does that happen, and why did they do it? Well, we have to understand that Hamas is supported by Iran. Iran is supported by Russia and Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin doesn't want Joe Biden as president of the United States. He'd prefer to have his little fucking manipulated puppet, Donald Trump, in there. So if you think this whole war and the timing of this war doesn't have some impact or some effect to the election, or at least that's their intent, you're crazy. It's like higher gas prices. It's big oil, not wanting Joe Biden in, and they're going to raise gas prices. It's all this stuff. It sounds like a conspiracy theory. It sounds suspicious. It sounds like it's um, cynical. But we've seen it for years and years. These Republicans will do anything in any way they can to try to make the Democrats look bad. And that's what this is about. Anyway, enough about that. All right, this says, sorry, Mike, it's been a while, but don't worry, I've been listening every day and you haven't drove me off yet. So I guess that's saying something, LOL. I'm writing, I guess, to say it just pains me to see what dipshit assholes have been elected to this great state, Jim Jordan, J.D. Vance, Turner, and others. This is, um, uh, this is, I believe, Matt from Ohio. But there is hope not only in Ohio, but the country. Not everybody is falling for the BS that the expired pumpkin wants to spew. It is very easy to see that everything he says is either a lie or he's trying to come up with it, and it doesn't make any sense. He's failing at every turn. And I have faith that democracy will prevail after all is said and done. A big shout out to all the guests and can't wait for the next one. Cheers, Mike and Boomer community. Trump for prison 2024. P.S. MAGA stands for manipulating America's gullible assholes. Thought you would like that. Peace, Matt. And, and actually, it sounds like Matt's going to be on at some point in the near future. Um, but see, that's <clears throat> that's the spirit we should be having. And it's not just a hope and a prayer. It's just watch what's going on. Look at Donald Trump in court. Look at what's happening to the Republican Party. They are losing, as he said, at every turn. We are headed the right direction. Don't get impatient. Don't cry and whine. Just watch it go because we're headed the right way. And I agree with Matt. We are going to see some amazing things after we get done with the 2024 election. All right. The next one says, Mike was wondering what you think about these protests at campuses over what's happening with a pro-Palestinian protest. Do you think it helps diaper Donnie in getting reelected and these protests hurt Joe Biden? The protests don't look good and it's giving diaper Donnie something to spew his bullshit uh, that this stuff wouldn't be happening if he was president. He's going to use these protests to degrade Biden and keep spewing his bullshit. I do not understand these people protest and what they're thinking because Biden is doing all he can. The protesting isn't helping the Palestinian people who are struggling to get food. I don't know why these protesters are not volunteering to help to get these people food and water. Well, we talked about that for a little bit. 
and you're absolutely right. I think this is is more progressive side Democrats that's pushing this thing. And as I've said before, they're never going to vote for Donald Trump. They're going to bitch and whine about Joe Biden. And what they're really trying to do is uh, exert some pressure, exert some pressure to have Joe Biden bend their way a little bit, bend to their will. And I honestly believe this, and I've noted it uh, since I've been doing these TikToks, and if I do something on Israel and Hamas, I get beat up by left side people, but not just the normal Democrats, the progressive Democrats. And I have a theory that anybody who is fanatical about anything is fucked up. Anybody that's fanatical about MAGA or Donald Trump, they're without question fucked up. But if you've got the progressive lefts, now, I'm not naming all the progressive lefts. There's a real radical part of the left side. I'm all for progressives because I think we've got a long way to go to make up for the bullshit we've been through. So I'm all for some progressive things to happen and get more done for the people of this country. But some people get radical and they will do and say things that they shouldn't be doing, um, like yelling about Joe Biden. I'm not voting for Joe Biden. Well, then who the fuck are you voting for? You're certainly not voting for Donald Trump. This is just all a way to exert pressure to get, try to get Joe Biden to do what you want him to do. That's what radicals do. They apply pressure and 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 uh, they play these fucking games. And you can never trust them because for them to say they're not going to vote for Joe Biden is absolutely ridiculous. Of course they are. When it comes down to it, they're going to vote for Biden. But they're going to keep pushing this thing until they get what they want. Now, with Joe Biden, he's savvy enough to know what's fucking up. And I think he has some plans to get this thing done at some point before the election. And when that happens, when he applies enough pressure to Netanyahu and they finally get this thing done, we won't be talking about how this is going to hurt Joe Biden. We're going to be exulting at the fact that this will help Joe Biden. This is a big problem. It doesn't look good sometimes. Do I think it's enough to sink the election for Joe Biden? No, I don't, because clearly there are more important things happening in this country that people are worried about, like uh, overturning Roe v. Wade and some of the other shit happening and Donald Trump uh, being convicted of multiple felonies. Those things are more important to the young people and all people in this country than Israel and Hamas. To get me to think otherwise is fucking crazy. You can scream about genocide in Gaza. I don't like it. I want it to stop. But this kind of shit is happening all over the world, all over the fucking world. And these people that are crying for the people in Gaza, I respect their concern for them. But where's the concern for all the other places that this is happening? You don't seem to care about that. So I question what your agenda is here. I say we should be fighting for all people and trying to save all people, not just one faction of folks. Don't tell me you're big and concerned and compassionate when you don't care about the rest of the fucking country, uh, rest of the world, because there are some horrific, fucking horrific shit just in Mir Myanmar. What the fuck? I don't hear you talking about Myanmar. I don't hear you talking have having protests. It's really a frustrating topic for me. I don't like talking about it. I probably will never talk about it on TikTok anymore. I will talk about it here to a certain extent, but I will say this. I still don't believe I have a dog in the fight. I don't have a preference on either side. Netanyahu is a fucking Donald Trump clone, and Hamas is a terrorist organization. I don't like either of the motherfuckers. The only people I'm concerned about are the people in Gaza that are innocent and basically collateral damage because the other two sides don't give a fuck. All right. We are going to take a quick break and we will be right back.
All right. We have some more emails, so let's get to them. This one comes from Scott. We heard from him earlier. He says, in a recent Trump email, it stated, friends, in 24 hours, the hearing on my gag order will begin. I could be thrown in jail at that very moment. This is what the hate America deep state has always dreamed of. Stand with Trump. I won't be able to campaign. I will be muzzled and silent. And Democrats will have free reign to destroy our country. Scott goes on to say, sounds like dirty diaper Donnie is really starting to lose it. And the trial is starting to get him. Uh, Yeah, it is getting to him. And all you have to do is look at the pictures we see from the courtroom when he's in there. He looks fucking rough. But notice something here. In spite of all this, he has to take this moment in time to try to fucking fundraise. He's struggling in the fundraising area, and he will take any opportunity. If they send him to jail, he'll use that to fundraise too. He may, in his heart of hearts, wants to be put in jail because he sees how lucrative it might be for him. But I think the moment he steps into jail he will have realized that he fucked around and found out. Thanks, Scott. All right, this one comes from Boris. He says, Rational Boomer, I continued researching information on Mr. Bragg's one loss record, and I know I now have a theory. The one thing I consistently saw from his critics was that he regularly works out deals to reduce sentences of indicted people from felonies to misdemeanors. My theory now is that the New York Post considered these reduced sentences as losses, thus drastically bringing down his record. What do you think, Boris? Uh, You know, honestly, Boris, I don't know. I mean, the New York Post is not the most reputable rag in the country. Um, They could have thought that, that if if they offered the reduced sentences, that that would be a, um, a loss, but... At the same time, these people would have had to uh, um, plead guilty. So I don't know how you look at that as any more than a win, regardless of what the sentence was. The sentence is really up to the judge if they play it out all together. I don't know, to be honest with you. This is what I do know. From what I've seen of this court case, regardless of what Elvin Bragg's winning percentage is, he's winning this one. There are going to be multiple double-digit crimes, convictions. That's going to happen in this one. There's no way Donald Trump runs the table and and and, and doesn't get convicted uh, of at least 10 uh, criminal felony charges. Um, it could be that, or it could be just bullshit that they pulled out of their ass. I mean, it's the New York Post, so who knows? I'm not as worried about the win-loss percentage at this point. I'm worried about this particular trial, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. I don't think Donald Trump's going to survive this one. Thanks, Boris. All right, the next one says, Hi, Mike. I thought yesterday about how Trump immediately sent out a fundraising email after being found guilty of contempt. I thought you weren't allowed to profit off your crimes. Is it possible that he's using this contempt ruling to fundraise uh, and have a fundraiser and it will lead to more charges. You know, I don't know. There's so many things that so many crimes he commits. You can only charge him with so many crimes and you can only punish him so much. It's possible, but I'm not altogether sure that they will get that far into it. We've got so much going on with the DOJ and in state courts with Donald Trump. I don't know where they have time to file more charges. I mean, you only need one or two charges to sink this motherfucker. So I don't know that it matters. And I don't know that they will go after something like that. It's probably harder to convict on. Email goes on to say, I thought what you and old soul were talking about on today's podcast was interesting. How Republican voters and Trump fucks can't see how they are the first people Dirty Diaper Donnie is willing and able to step on. He has grifted them dry, took away their rights, and killed them with COVID. How can't they see that? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. I really don't know. Now, Dirty Diaper Donnie is laying the groundwork for his election claims again. He said the other day he'll have to wait until after the election to say if he was if it was a fair and free and fair and honest election. Translation, he will only accept it if he wins. Otherwise, let the tantrum begin. 
I'm seeing a couple of new Republican talking points, the first being that Kamala Harris is descended from slave owners. So if she becomes president, if something happens to Joe, it is bad for people of color. The other is now some Republicans are saying that libs love dogs more than fetuses and are saying that people can't be pro-choice and mad at Christy Nome. These people are fucking stupid. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. All these equivocations, they're just absolutely ridiculous. And I, I don't understand how that ever gets any traction, but there are some Democrats will say, you know, he's on to something there. Republicans are stupid. And every time they come out with these uh, excuses or equivocations, they prove how stupid they are. It's absolutely ridiculous comparing shooting a dog to reproductive rights. That's a bit of a stretch. It's apples and oranges. And um, the other thing that amazes me is this fear of Kamala Harris. My God, she's a woman and she's black. If you vote in Joe Biden and he keels over, she will be president. My goodness, what will we do? Well, honestly, I'm not worried about it. I think Kamala Harris might be a very good president. I think people will be surprised with what happens. Um, I was talking to somebody today. This good friend of mine was a business partner. And while he leans more conservative and while he maybe at one point was a Trump fan, he's not now because he's not stupid and he sees how stupid Donald Trump is. But he said that to me. He said, I'm worried about Joe Biden because if something happens to him, Kamala Harris could be the president. And he looks at me and he, it's not because she's a woman. <laughs> I said, is it because she's black? He goes, no, of course not. And then what is it? What don't you like about her? And he started, I just don't like the way she thinks. Such as, what is a policy you don't like that she stands for? And he couldn't answer that. People just get these gut reactions. I don't like that person. I love that person. And when you love Donald Trump and hate Kamala, Kamala Harris, you have to question your decision-making. It's fucking ridiculous. All right, next up. Thanks, Eric. This comes from a woman by the name of Doreen. Doreen. Spelled D-A-U-R-E-E-N, not the typical Doreen spelling. It says, hi, Mike. I've been a follower on TikTok for a long time. We are mutuals, friends on TikTok. I do edit one of your TikToks today, the one on the war protest, and now I can't see your profile or anything of your posts. I'm wondering what happened. I doubt you got booted because you're very cautious. I hope I didn't get blocked. If I said something that came out wrong, I'm sorry. I agree with all your content, so not sure what happened. My name on TikTok is Earthling. And I have a pick of the earth, Doreen. And I don't know what happened. I mean, in terms of if you do edit my post, I'm uh, I'm not blocking people that do at my post. I do block people frequently when I'm looking at the comments. Um, and I'll be honest, I, I don't know what happened in this situation. I don't know if you're blocked. But I've, I've come to the point where... When I get some negative comments, I presume it's it's Republican. Um, uh, and I should think twice about it now when, when I did something on the Iran-Hamas war. Um, people even said to me, how dare you call it a war? It's a genocide. Fuck you. Just fuck you. We've got a former president on trial for 34 criminal charges. That's what I'm worried about right now. I'm worried about the future of our country and the democracy hanging by a thread. Yeah, we got some problems we need to worry about. Before we fix the world, let's fix us. Anyway, if I get people coming to my page seeming like they are not on the right state of mind or are on the right state of mind. I'll block them just like that. I will. Because not because it hurts my feelings or, or I did, I'm, I'm worried about them disagreeing with me. That's not the case. The reason I block people is to protect the platform. And I experienced that very same thing today. I got a video taken down. It doesn't happen very often, but I got it taken down and it was either 
uh, it was probably by a Trump lefuck in this case. And then I got people coming out that are, are imposters of my account. And they take me out of the uh, 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 creator fund. And then I got to go through a whole process to reply for it. So if I'm looking at comments and you look like you might be somebody that might be adversarial and might be a risk to my platform, you're fucking gone. That's just the way it is. And I, I can't speak to this particular situation. I will look into it. Um, I would have to see what you said. And it's very touchy when, when you're looking at what people say. If they come out with a negative response, you really have to look into it because they may not be talking about what I'm talking about. They may be talking about some other idiot, some Trump fuck that responded, and they're just responding to them. So you have to be careful. Could it be that I block somebody uh, incorrectly? Yeah, that could be. That could be. Uh, I don't. I don't mind people being contrary to me. I'm happy about that. If we can get a conversation about it, I'm all for it. Uh, you don't have to believe all the things I think. Um, you don't have to not call me out. You can call me out. That's fine. I have no problem with it. But when I look at the wording and I see them as a potential danger to the platform, I take no risks there. None. Because that platform is important to me. It gets me to you folks in the podcast and it gets me to the people on TikTok. And if I'm going to have some fucker, whether it be a wildly left Democrat or a wildly right Republican, I don't care. I'm not going to take that risk. Um, if you have something that you want to call me out on and you want to be contradictory to me, that's cool. The place to do that is right here on emails. That's where you do it. I feel more comfortable about dealing with people who have something negative to say about me. I'm happy to give you the voice to do it, and I will respond to it as respectfully as I can. Uh, but when you do it on TikTok, I'm very, very skittish about it. Again, not because... I have hurt feelings. You can't hurt my feelings. Nobody can hurt my feelings. I, I don't allow it. But if I think you might be a risk to the platform, that's all it takes. That's all it fucking takes. So if you want to give me shit, feel free. I'm happy to do it. I've read them here. You, you've seen that. Uh, email me at rationalboomer at gmail.com. Don't leave some random fucking comment because I don't know who this person is and I don't know what their mindset is. And if it sounds like they're being adversarial, not just to me, but to the, the idea, the content of the video or some other people. See, that's the other thing. If you're confrontational to some other people in the thread, I'm going to kick you off too. Because then it's going to create a mess in the thread and there's going to be arguments and all that stuff. I don't want that shit. So if you want to call me out and talk shit to me, email me. Don't put it in the comments. All right. The next one says, hey, Boomer, today's interesting story is Trump threw Carrie Lake off the bus and out of mar lago She's the first lady of MAGA. You name it, she said it. What's being said is Trump thinks her extremism and radical views are, get this, a threat to the Arizona Senate seat and more importantly to his campaign. What the fuck is going on? MAGA has become to MAGA for Donnie and the Russian Republicans. He's feeling the heat, obviously, over the abortion issue there and elsewhere. He's upset. She's pissed off the McCain Republicans. And from what I gather, her complete batshit behavior. Apparently, she's running for the Senate seat and is never in Arizona. It looks like the MAGA cult has begun to devour itself. Is this possible? A case of we've met the enemy and it's us. The way things are going for him and the Republicans, coupled with the bad reception his little MAGA's got at the demonstrations, I think that Trump and the Republican uh, MAGA maggots will be quoting FDR soon. More beers and popcorn, fellow Boomer Brigade Z-Man. Well, you're right. Um, this is very interesting as to what's going on with the Republican Party. And Republic, uh, the Republican Party has largely been destroyed by Donald Trump, absolutely destroyed. It bears no resemblance to what the Republican Party was prior to 2015. 
It's not even the Republican Party anymore. It's not conservative. It's not Republican. And they are going to devour themselves. <clears throat> and if they want to devour Carrie Lake, cool, because she's running against Ruben Gallegos in um, in the Arizona Arizona Senate seat. There, there. Uh, I just soon Carrie Lake go by the wayside and have Ruben Gallegos take it. That is the seat that was held by Cinema. She was a Democrat, and then she was an independent, but she was no friend of the Democrats. If we got Cinema out of there, Carrie Lake out of there, and Gallegos in, we've got a solid Democratic vote, and that is an absolute win for the Democratic Party. And we need as many people on the Democratic side as we can get in the Senate. And I think Gallegos will win that with no problem. And the Republicans, including Donald Trump, are certainly not helping Carrie Lake. She's a horrible candidate. And if her own people aren't supporting her, she doesn't have a fucking prayer. All right. The gag defying Donald Trump may be tossed in jail by his criminal hus money judge as the trial moves on, and it could be ordered even if prosecutors don't ask for it. The fact that the prosecution doesn't point to jail time doesn't really matter to the judge, former New York prosecutor and Pace University law professor said in the media. Uh, and that's a good point. Now, the first time through the gag order hearing, he was found guilty of nine violations of the gag order. He was fined $9,000. Yesterday, they had another hearing, a hearing that was set up before the decision was made by Judge Marchand. They heard the hearing today. It didn't go well for the lawyers. Um, Marchand basically called out the lawyers for just saying ridiculous shit. He has, at this point, reserved his decision on it. Now, theoretically, because... Donald Trump's already burned the bridge. He could theoretically put him in jail, but the prosecution did not su suggest that. They made the complaint, the hearing was heard, and all they suggested was that they fine him $1,000 per violation, and I think there was four of them. But here's the deal. There's a reason they did that, and I know a lot of people get upset about this, but the reason they did that is because they want the trial to continue to move quickly and efficiently. Everything's going the way of the prosecution. No reason to cause a disturbance or create a hurdle or whatever. They don't want to delay or confuse this trial. Now, people will say to me, yeah, well, they can put them in jail and drag them down during trial. It won't slow things down at all. It's not the logistics of it, of putting him in jail. It's the noise that this will create and the problems it can create. Everything's running pretty smoothly for the prosecution and the judge thus far. Everything is relatively in control, and the judge wants to do that. The judge wants one thing. He is basically the manager of this trial. He wants it to go on without a hitch. He wants it to be efficient. He wants it to be as quick as it possibly can. They want to get a verdict, get this thing done, and move on to the next thing. That's what the judge wants. Now, that said, in spite of the fact that the prosecution said, no, nah, don't throw him in jail, Judge Marchand is going to do whatever he thinks he needs to do to maintain some stability in that trial. If he thinks the only thing possible is to put Donald Trump in jail, well, he'll fucking do that. I thought of another option, too, is to um, find him guilty again, say you are going to do some jail time, but you're not going to do it until the end of the case. So whether you win or lose, you're going to jail for at least a few days because of these violations. But I think more than that, what's going to happen, because this these complaints came out before he gave a decision on the first hearing. He's likely to give him the uh, the fines again and a pretty stern talking to, and then just say, look, after this, my hands are tied. The only thing I can do is put you in jail. So please, please, please do not make me put you in jail. 
that's not going to work with Donald Trump. I think ultimately they will have to do something pretty uh, serious to Donald Trump in order to get him to shut the fuck up because this judge doesn't really play games. And if he sees that individuals are playing games with him, he's going to come down strongly on him, regardless of what the prosecution wants them to, wants him to do. Now we know that Marchand already fined him 9,000 on Tuesday um, that he found president Donald Trump in contempt for routine, routinely flouting the narrow gag order nine times and ordered him to delete the true social posts, taking shots at jurors and witnesses, which we talked about during the emails. He did that. He took them down quick, fast, and in a fucking hurry, Mr. Tough Guy. Now, Marchand talked, uh, noted that uh, New York state law does not permit him to escalate fines against Trump, which led him to conclude that court must therefore consider whether in some instances jail may be a necessary punishment for future violations. The warning didn't appear to restrain Trump, who is the GOP nominee, of course, and he was still poking the juris bear from the lectern at a rally in Waukesha, Wisconsin, where he stated, there is no crime. I have a crooked judge. He's totally conflicted. Now, in court, Trump's lead counsel, Todd Blanche, tried to show that his client is forced to remain silent while his former fixer and attorney Michael Cohen continues to lob attacks at him. <laughs> and uh, it was funny because there was something put in the official record that is just hilarious. Donald Trump's lawyers were trying to complain how Michael Cohen's being mean and he should be able to respond to that in spite of the fact that he's a uh, witness. And uh, basically the lawyer said, look, man, he called Donald Trump. Um, what do you call him? Von shits in his pants. <laughs> Von shits in his pants is what he called him. And then hurt Donnie's feelings. Oh, my God, what's he going to do? So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen. We need a decision on this second hearing. And my guess is there's probably going to be a third hearing, too. And he may or may not uh, go to jail on the second hearing. But if there is a third hearing, that is the only option left. He's going to have to do something. And Marchand is not interested in fucking around with this thing. Now, Washington University School of Law professor Peter Joy pointed to a lot of precedent about judges' authority to find people in contempt and place them in jail. He said, I have no doubt in my mind that Trump's going to continue to violate the order that he has up until the point where there's a more serious reper repercussion. And uh, I agree with him. He's going to push the limit, push the envelope to the edge. And knowing Donald Trump, he's not the brightest guy in the world, and he doesn't know when to give up. He'll go past that line, and he will be punished. The question is, what will he do after that punishment? Will he learn a lesson and stop, or will he continually be put in jail for two or three days or whatever? I don't know. I don't honestly know. But uh, Donald Trump is on the verge of fucking around and finding out. Well, it was interesting in the trial today, there was a lot that happened, a lot of uh, important shit, a lot of revealing shit. Now, jurors in this case uh, heard a recording Thursday of him discussing with his then lawyer and personal fixer a plan to purchase the silence of a Playboy model who has said he had an affair with the former president or she had an affair with the former president. Isn't that the ironic thing about Donald Trump? He commits all these crimes. He says he didn't do it, but there's always a motherfucking tape. Always a tape. Now, a visibly irritated Trump leaned forward at the defense table and jurors appeared riveted as prosecutors played the September 2016 recording. And get this, you know who recorded it? Michael Cohen secretly made of himself briefing a celebrity client on a plan to buy Karen McGougal's story of an extramarital relationship. Now, this recording surfaced years ago. It is perhaps the most colorful piece of evidence presented to the jurors so far to connect Trump to the hush money payments at the center of the criminal trial. 
It followed hours of testimony from a lawyer who negotiated the deal for McDougal's silence and admitted to being stunned that his hidden hand efforts might have contributed to Trump's White House victory. Now, Keith Davidson was on the witness stand. Now, Keith Davidson is a slimy piece of shit. He's all about these Hollywood uh, scandals and extorting money out of people. <laughs> he's not a good guy, yet he's a witness for the prosecution. And, of course, Donald Trump's lawyers tried to discredit him by explaining all of this stuff and exposing what kind of human he is. And the fact is the Republican or the um, defense team for Donald Trump is absolutely right. He is an absolute piece of shit. But that doesn't change the fact that Donald Trump tried to cover something up. He sent money to his own sketchy fucking lawyer, who then sent the money to a yet another even sketchier lawyer, and then ultimately to Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal. They're going to try to discredit him because they think that's a defense. It's not a defense. My question would be, if he's that sketchy, why is Donald Trump doing fucking business with him? That's the question. Now, there were some text messages, too. And there was one text message from Keith Davidson that said, what have we done? He texted the then editor of the National Enquirer, which he had buried stories of sexual encounters to prevent them surfacing in the final days of the bitterly contested race. He said, oh, my God, that came as a response from Dylan Howard. Now, there was an understanding that our efforts may have in some way strike that our activities may have in some way assisted the presidential campaign, Davidson told jurors, though he acknowledged under cross-examination that he dealt directly with Cohen and never Trump. Yeah, but Donald Trump was a rep or Michael Cohen was a representative of Donald Trump. Now, the testimony from Davidson was designed to directly connect the hush money payments to Trump's presidential ambitions, um, and clearly it did. And this is why I say this trial is going so well for the prosecution. They don't want anything to fucking mess it up. Donald Trump is going to get convicted. There is nothing in the case we've seen so far to say otherwise. Now, of course, when the prosecution is done, the defense will be able to put up their case. But I don't know that they have many witnesses, and I don't know that they have many things that they can refute. The only thing they can hope for, and what I suspect they're doing, is they're going to try to discount all the prosecution's witnesses in hopes of leaving some shred of doubt, which would get Donald Trump off. But what the prosecution is doing is very clearly taking away any shred of doubt. This happened. We've got fucking audio tapes. So I don't know what the defense is going to do. I don't think they have many options. Now, District Attorney Alvin Bragg has sought to establish that link, not just to secure a conviction, but also to persuade the public of the significance of the case, which may be the only one of the four Trump prosecutions to reach trial this year. Um, now, Davidson explained, this is sort of gallows humor. It was on election night as the results were coming in, Davidson explained. There was sort of a surprise among the broadcasters and others that Mr. Trump was leading in the polls, and there was a growing sense that the folks were about ready to call the election. See, that's the thing. Um, we've got Davidson, the lawyer. We've got the Inquirer. They did all these things. They made some money. They put some money in their pockets. I don't even think they believed it was going to work. And then when it did, they're going, holy shit, we may have just fucked up. And now we're finding out that they, in fact, did fuck up. Now this guy's in court testifying against the guy he got the money from. Davison is seen as a vital building block for the prosecution's case that Trump and his allies schemed to bury unflattering stories in the run-up of the 2016 election. See, that's what they did over and above, and that's a crime too, over and above paying Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal. They created fake stories about, their, about his opponents, and they put that out, for which 
Donald Trump was involved too. That is highly illegal. And basically the same along the same lines as you were trying to influence the election. I had somebody come to my page and saying, there's no, it's not illegal to pay off a porn star and to uh, interfere with the election. <laughs> and I said, this is the epitome of stupid on the Republican side. You're absolutely right. There is no crime in paying off a porn star to keep her mouth shut. But if you do that in the process of trying to keep it from the people coming into election, therein lies the crime. And then when you log it into your um, into your uh, paperwork and you say that it's for legal fees and you lie, then you've got fucking fraud. So there's plenty of crime there in spite of what the Trump fucks hope that is happening. Uh, Davison is one of multiple key players testifying in advance of Cohen, the star prosecution witness who paid Daniels $130,000 for her um, silence. Now, as I've said before, Michael Cohen has his own uh, credibility problems, having been uh, convicted of crimes and having gone to jail. N never mind the fact that all those things he went to jail for were about this topic and about this crime. So if Michael Cohen goes to jail, so should Donald Trump. But um, what they're doing here with the likes of Davidson or Rona Graff or anything, they're pulling together information that will corroborate what Michael Cohen said. You may not believe he's totally honest. And let's be honest, Michael Cohen is a piece of shit in his own right. People like him now because he's speaking out against Donald Trump. But when he was working for Donald Trump, he was a horrible fuck. Absolutely horrible fuck. Uh, but now what they're doing is bringing together all these lesser witnesses to put up information that corroborates Michael Cohen, in spite of the fact he has some credibility problems, it's being corroborated by all these other witnesses, and that will make his case that much stronger. So anyway, the case goes on today. We'll hear more about what's happening and uh, how Donald Trump's fate is. Doesn't look good. And he knows it doesn't look good. So now, <clears throat> I don't know if you heard this, or maybe I talked about it yesterday. Um, Donald Trump knows this is going badly. He sits there every day. He can hear this. He's not that stupid. He doesn't like hearing about things he doesn't want to hear about. He gets frustrated. He gets mad. Now, when a narcissist gets mad and something's going wrong, they have to find somebody to blame. And Donald Trump does have somebody to blame. Todd Blanche, his lead attorney in this case, in spite of the fact that Donald Trump has told Blanche to do all these things where he's embarrassed himself and put him at risk of uh, sanctions, uh, Donald Trump is losing. And even though Blanche has pretty much done all of Donald Trump's bidding, in spite of the fact that Donald Trump doesn't know anything about the law, Donald Trump's going to blame him for not being tough enough, not going after witnesses, not going after the prosecution or even going after the judge. Donald Trump wants this guy to stand up and call him out and call him names and go after him, which is absolutely crazy. If he does that, fucking Todd Blanche will end up in a jail cell for contempt. But Donald Trump doesn't know what else to do. It couldn't be him that was wrong. So it's got to be Todd Blanche. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. This trial is not going to get better for Donald Trump. It's going to get worse. And as it gets worse, he's going to get panicky and he's going to go after Todd Blanche. It'll be interesting to see all this plays out. Now, I know some people are thinking, well, if he goes after Todd Blanche and then he fires him and then that slows down the trial. Well, it's not that easy. You can be in the midst of the trial. You can try to fire your lawyer, but it's only after the judge approves it. And there's no way that the judge is going to fucking approve that. This trial is going to go from beginning to end. Some point at the end of May or early June, we are going to finish the trial. We are going to get the jury deliberations. We are going to get a decision and we are going to get multiple convictions of Donald Trump. And then that's where everything falls in to Donald Trump. All right. We are going to wrap up the Rational Boomer podcast. I want to uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day. Um, I hope you have a great day, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.